So Leg Arms and I are debating who broke the tractor. Now he has a theory that I drove through a deep ditch and it basically... I'm pretty sure he's missed that old tractor. He has spent hundreds, if not thousands of hours on that tractor. And I'm sure he's got some pretty fun stories that he could tell if he remembers some of them. I mean, with everything going on, it's hard to remember what's, you know, just things in the past, but there's a lot of history in that tractor and a lot of history in him. It's pretty awesome, guys. It's neat to see that family can work together. We have the same goal in mind and we're blessed. We're very blessed. And I hope many of you are blessed as well. I love that tractor. Did I mention that? It's so neat to see that thing running. Isn't that fun? Just a little bit. I forgot to wash the windshield. Oh well. I'm gonna ask my dad two questions. First of all, did you have fun driving the Minneapolis Moline since it's been sitting there for a long time? Yeah, uh, I had to go back to old school, old school to figure out how to run this now after being on the newer school bud, but so uh, you, it came to me. You liked it? Yeah, it's okay. a great, it's fun. That You can't beat that sound of those four cylinders. So they're, it's an awesome sound. The second question is, what kind of story comes to mind or what's a, a memory that you had with this tractor or something fun that, uh, cause you spent hundreds of hours on this thing. Yeah, this is one of the first tractors I learned to uh, run uh, because uh, we had a, an implement called a rock picker and it had tines and you would run around and you would straddle the rocks because it, it would be pulled behind and then you would run around picking up rocks with the forks and then back it up. I remember it got to a point where I think it blew a hose or something and so we just drained the fluid left it that winter. Uh, maybe put the hose back on, but never put any fluid in. Well, somehow we goofed and we fired the thing up in the summer that year to go start picking rock. And I drove down about a half mile and it started getting slower and slower. The engine finally it stopped. And I wondered what was going on and messed around. And, and I happened to look and the plug was gone out of the radiator. So we had ran at that half mile without any fluid in it. Uh, well, I figured, well, that engine's tell, so I put some fluid back in it, and I ran it the rest of that uh, year, and it ran. These things are tough old girls. It's hard to keep them down. So we, after this, we made sure that uh, we either had good antifreeze in there or the plug was in. But otherwise, yeah, just many, many hours out there running around. And, and with this type of uh, steering, a lot of people ask, why isn't there a seat on there? Well, when you're picking rocks, you're looking this way and you're looking that way and you're planning and you got to turn the wheel to, around to try to get get uh, the rocks. Well, if you're sitting down on one of these things and there's the ground soft and you're trying to turn the wheel this way and that way, you don't have a lot of fulcrum in your arms. So standing was a much easier to sit there and just turn, be able to torque that wheel over fast and then back the other way, you know, so we get the rocks picked. So that's why the seat wasn't on this. You pretty much just stood and picked rocks. We had a guy picking rocks for us, a family member that for a while, one uh, after harvest one year, the thing was getting weaker and weaker. And that probably was that time when maybe the water ran out. And finally he kept picking, we just let him go. And he was just picked along and usually picking about third gear. And if it's really bad, you gotta get in second gear. Well, he started picking in second gear. That's all it would pull. And pretty soon it was first gear. And we dropped him off and he didn't say much. He just said, yeah, we figured that it took a little while to get the rocks picked. We come back, he had hardly moved. He was running this thing around in first gear around. It would hardly run. So we finally said, you know, we need to upgrade this thing. So we took it in and, and did a ring job and a valve job and back up and running again. So these things just keep running and running and running. They're an awesome 
tractor in its time. It was fun getting back on it again. It brought back a lot of memories. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to pass it on to the next generation because now we have rotary rock pickers. They're a little bigger and now you have better tractors. So maybe we'll hook this up to a rock picker sometime and show you how it's really done. Rock solid. And don't take that for granted. Oh, another beautiful day. Sweatshirt won't be on long today. They're talking 70 some degrees. Gorgeous. I think we're going to finish plant 2020 today. Isn't that amazing? Let's see if we can do it. That's it. That's all the seed in this truck and a little bit in the pan. So I'll run this back to the shop, and then I'll come back, grab the Defender Pro, drag the pan over with a little bit in it, take a shovel, throw it in the back of this truck, pressure wash out that truck, because uh, they're treated. So you want to make sure that truck's nice and clean in case we haul clean seed somewhere. Ah, good deal. So far, off to a good start. We're gonna hit that 500 acres and finish plant 2020. You guys staying with me? Good deal. I like that thing. That's pretty sweet. Pretty useful. I still can't believe how much power that has. I know our other four wheelers were only like 300 cc's. That's a thousand, so it's like three times the engine. Still, that's amazing. We get the skid steer. I was thinking I'd put the bucket on it. And dump all this in the bucket and then take the bucket and dump it in there? Or is it fast for me to just grab a shovel, and scoop scoops and throw it in the back? Or am I just gonna make a massive mess and then Wiggles or leg arms gonna have to clean it up for me? But it's not in the shop, so I don't have to clean it, right? As long as I keep the door shut and it's going in there, I don't have to clean it. It's their responsibility. Let's go with the skid steer. any help. Should have left the new Holland or Case IH on that thing. Maybe it did a better job. The latches for the forks were stuck. I don't know why they weren't stuck when I used it yesterday, so I had to get a pipe to break that loose. And then it couldn't lift high enough to dump in the truck. Dumped it before, but maybe I was just on a higher surface with the skid steer. I don't know. So I parked this on this side of the concrete, and I was on this side. That got me just enough clearance to get over the top. And then I had to go up there and scrape it in my hand. I should have shoveled it in. It's okay. It's all good. I, I do like that skid steer. You know, poke fun at it, but... It's good, it's been doing a lot for us. We're thankful to have it. I'm back in my pickup. I've been in this thing in a while. Poor Toyota. I've been treating it very nice. It's sitting in my yard, because I don't go anywhere. But I took it today, because the Fummins was gone from the shop, and I needed to get to where these guys are. I stopped spraying, the wind is picking up. Um, where I'm spraying, there's some neighbors nearby, and I really don't feel like dusting their young wheat with glyphosate, because that'll uh, roast it, so let's not do that. But we are on the tail end, finishing planting. Uh, there are just one truck left of seed. We gotta go fill leg arms up. Dad just filled up. I think we're gonna be done by later today. It's gonna be awesome. So yeah, a couple projects gotta do between now and then. And a lot of spraying still, cause I gotta spray all the ground that we just planted the chickpeas on, as well as another 1,500 acres of camp file that I haven't done yet. So my job hasn't ended. But the guys running the drills, there Sass. about halfway done actually a little bit more than halfway done very very possible if everything goes well today we could finish seeding all the chickpeas today hopefully tomorrow we'll finish it up we still have to roll all the peas brad actually wiggles i should say he still has to roll uh so he's got about 200 some acres done he's got about 300 and some over here to do and then up north so uh yeah he's making good progress but we're gonna fill this up make sure i got tons of seed so then that way we can start uh well making this day productive Fun. He's got a little hole here he's dug into and he's just kind of hanging out. Usually they're pretty docile. You can, he's petted them before. Yeah, it was actually kind of fun. I got a, throw a carrot and stuck it on his quills and was petting them. 
We don't mind them. They're, they're, they're harmless around here. They eat the trees, the bark off trees in the winter, so a lot of people don't like them. They kill trees, but as you can see, we don't have a lot of trees here, so it's not really a big issue for us. But they're fun to see every now and then. What are you gonna call this one? Um, Gimmis. Gimmis. Hi, Gimmis. Maybe we should get back to work. We're gonna finish planting today and we're playing with porcupines. A little bit breezy today. <laughs> not bad though. All goes to plant last field. Dad's over in this one over here. He's just about to finish that up, but this will be the last one because he'll have that done first. I'm gonna go hitch on a ride with the old leg arms here and the 600 and uh, play around with that Pro 700 and AccuTurn. I'm gonna go for a ride. So leg arms and I are debating who broke the tractor. Now he has a theory that I drove it through a deep ditch and it basically pinched the drawbar as I went through and crushed it down. I think he's just trying to blame me. I think he's catching on. I don't know. But so far it's staying together. We're really kind of nervous that we're almost going to hear a big clunk and look back and it's going to be dragging in the ground. But it hasn't happened yet. We've got just a little bit left on this field. Literally like one end pass and we'll be done. So hopefully it survives. What a way to end the season is breaking your beloved tractor. So dad's back there with the tractor. He just finished his field. That means we're on the last field. Technically though we do have some seed left over so we might have to find one more spot on the farm to finish planting all this. The issue is still there. The draw bar is hanging on. It's a bracket that holds the draw bar up. It can be unbolted. We will be able to take it off after season, look at it, figure out a way to either reinforce it, rebuild it, replace it. I don't know, somehow. But yeah, you're, kinda, not, you're not gonna flex seal it? We could flex seal it. We should probably try that. I mean, we could try flex seal. Trevor does it. Trevor Bales would totally do that. Yeah, he, does, he always does it. I don't trust anything that guy somehow, says. Trevor's always got a sandwich in his mouth. Like and an ice cream bar. Yeah, and ice Always, always ice cream. All right. You're fatty. Oh, Dad's seen the pass behind you. What? He's back there seeing. Yes, you sir. Know. Sure? Yeah. You see the left over here. Dragging it. I don't know. Yay! Is that it? Pull it out of the ground. Okay, technically we're like sort of done, but we're not. We finished the field. Dad finished his field. The tractor's still going, but we have a little bit of seed left in the truck and some seed left in this cart here that we got to get out. We got to get out of this one, definitely, because that draw bar is not hanging on much longer. Two, we gotta find a piece to see the rest of those peas out under for beans, chickpeas. Chickpeas, garbanzo beans, whatever you wanna call it, they gotta go somewhere because they're inoculated, which means they have a shelf life of just a couple days of inoculant. So we'll put them all in his drill since that other tractor is good to go and go find a field and go finish this. Sound good? What do you uh, think? Um, I just feel fat. I can eat a lot of pizza after today. I say we, we have a pizza hut run, this is all done. And then I'm gonna go sit in the sprayer for two days straight. Okay. I have a lot of spraying ahead of me. I'm winging it. Okay, wing it up. All right, let's look at this draw bar. What we're afraid of is that breaking off right there and falling down. No, it didn't hit. I was wondering if it like, it was such a deep draw that it pinched it. Yeah. But it doesn't look like it hit there. The cracks are right here. See that crack? So it's almost completely broke off right here on both sides. There's just a little bit. And it's got a big smile to it. Yeah, Scott Maybe broke it. There's no way I did it. I've been cleaning the shop the whole time. I haven't even been farming. Now that we unloaded everything from the 3450 cart, put it in the truck, then from the truck, we're gonna stick over into the 3850, which is over here. 600 bud, you had a good run. It'll be another day. But, five and a quarter, you can keep going. At least the bud's running. Well, it's getting a little later in the evening. I'll probably run for about another half hour or so. When it starts getting dark, this guy starts to go find a den. But anyway, I was just going to show you here that a uh, little notice came up on the Intelligent Ag blockage monitoring system. It says number seven on number one, for some reason, is blocked. And I'm just coming up here to the end of the field and I'll just swing out and let's just go see what that is. So what I'm taking is a wire. It's a heavy wire so it, it can be stuck up the boot or down the boot, whatever. Want to come? Yeah, we had a real nice sunset. We get a lot of those in this country because of the clouds that form coming over the Rocky Mountains. They'll form right in that area and then the sun sets through them and underneath them and then they 
end up glowing with the red color. This is our wet creek, dry creek, muddy creek. It's just one of these seeps that uh, when it rains enough, it runs down here. There's a reservoir up there, but also this ground is what they call saline sleep seep. Say that twice when you're getting tired. It's the calciums and the other salts that are in the soil that come down from the slopes, the water, groundwater, because underneath this, just a little ways, not very far, is an impermeable layer of clay. So the water can't really soak down in, and that's one reason why we don't have any groundwater in this country. It will follow the slopes, and then it'll exit where it shallows out. Of course, this one's uh, natural drainage for it, and it stays wet most of the year. Anyway, this uh, tower right here, aha! Do you see what's wrong? The hose clamp finally loosened up enough where come off and so it sensed it right away that there was a problem that it wasn't getting any product and this is the unit what it is is the flow comes along here it hits a plate right here and then is deflect down and then continues to travel this is just like a stethoscope that a doctor uses it hears all the thumps actually it's a bunch of splattering that happens right here and then this hose uh, sends the sound waves into the ECU unit and registers all the sound and when it doesn't get any sound it sends alarm up to the tractor. So it's really sweet. There's no wires that run into this, you know, having to run all the way back to the tractor. It's all sent by Wi-Fi from the, these eight units. See the blinking? That means that everything's okay. It's working well and it sends it up to that Wi-Fi receiver and then is transmitted on into the cabin monitor. So real simple. But I gotta go, I do have a wrench to, to take the hose clamp, get it loose and plug it back in there, but I'm gonna show you something that we do that's kind of unusual. I mean, in some places, I we got tired of uh, the hoses coming off all the time. And this is before we even had the block, this blocking system. What we do, if you look, see this screw? That's a sheetrock screw, like one of the short ones. And you just punch through the count, the coulter area right here. You just go right through this uh, holder unit and then just uh, pierce into the plastic hose and that will secure it. We never have an issue of this happening. And as you see, these don't have those screws in there. It's just held by the hose clamp. We're having issues trying to keep the hoses on uh, the sensors or the manifold. You don't have to go very far into the plastic to uh, secure that and it won't come loose. But let's get this corrected. Okay, that was an easy fix. Uh, if that one comes off again, a screw's going in it. And that way I won't be screwed any longer with that one coming off. But anyway, that one's my only fan of the day. It lets me know all the time of its approval, but it sure whines. All right, tell me, let's go. He must be getting old like me. When he was younger, that distance there was nothing jump from six feet out up on it and then he will also do that once in a while if he comes running and he'll jump on to make sure he doesn't get lost but anymore he's sitting there puts his feet up there and then looks at me and wants to be held all right let's get going now that uh, we've got that fixed i'll show you say there's not an issue well that was a pretty eventful end of plant 2020 we're not a hundred percent done so I can't say we're finished. We've got about 50 acres left to plant tomorrow because we have that much seed left over. And so we're gonna wait till tomorrow to do that. Really sad to see what happened to that big bud. That's unfortunate. It's not something that we can't fix. It's just iron. You can fix iron. We're just really not sure how that happened because we've been running an air cart on that bud a number of times throughout the years and have never had anything like that. So somewhere out there, a big bump or something happened and it did some damage. So we'll get it fixed. Anyways, I got around the town. I'm gonna grab some uh, chemical that's waiting for me. I called it in a while ago because it's Saturday. So they put it outside for me to come pick up and I didn't pick it up and it's been like six hours. So I'm gonna run in there, go grab that stuff, bring it back out. That way tomorrow I can start spraying these chickpeas before the rain that's coming next week. Just a couple things left to wrap up and then we're done. And then we gotta build some grain bins, and then I gotta go to the lake house, and then I'm gonna go to 
Cancun, maybe like St. Lucius, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. That'd be really sweet. My wife would love to go to one of those. So we gotta get through these kid stages and then we'll start doing that kind of stuff again. Even though I never really did that stuff before, but it sounds good. Looks good on TV. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go. See ya. Didn't quite get it done. Oh, it was a push. We still have 300 acres of chickpeas I need sprayed. About 800 acres of camp fallow. It started raining. It wasn't supposed to rain today. We were supposed to get today. The last two robbed before the rain, but that's okay, whatever. We'll put it on hold. So, sprayers are parked in the yard, as you can see. Patchy and the brute. Patchy finally got some use. And uh, we'll pick it up later in the week, depending on how much rain we get. But it is a sheer blessing to get this rain right now, because the crop is in. It's all seeded. That's the best and most important part. So, <laughs> change of plans. We we're gonna have some grain bins erected this week. Got delayed because of the rain. I am gonna go to the lake house and do some much needed work to that place that we haven't been able to do because farming has been so intense. So one thing, I just gotta get that place wrapped up and take a huge burden off my shoulders. We are officially done with seating. Just got done dropping the rollers out of the 3850 cart and uh, got done washing off all the fertilizer out of the tanks, all the treat and uh, inoculant, all that good stuff. And I'm a little grimy because I found some hydraulic oil as kind of working on too. But that being said, keyword, I love this woman. We're taking that uh, five and a quarter bud with that cart and drills. We're bringing it over to our Quonset and uh, we're gonna drop it off at a certain place, unhook the bud, bring the bud back, get the 600 bud, do the same thing, go drop the other cart off and uh, we should be basically done. But we still have some spraying and a few other things going on. So it's uh, so crazy and chaotic and Life is busy, but you just keep pushing one day at a time and eventually you get your stuff done, hopefully. And then you find more stuff to do. All right, let's do this. It is such a neat day because uh, it's been a long push of getting things ready, things getting going, uh, trying to coordinate everything, and then trying to plant and spray and uh, all the miscellaneous things along the way. It has been quite a few, but we managed to make do and finally there. We get to spend time with our families and that's what we want. Love that tractor. And the brakes are squeaking. I'm unquarantined now. We went ahead, did the same thing as the other one, but we got the 600 buds sitting over here because the cracking on it, I don't think it's gonna make it all the way over to the Quonset and back. Well, it can make it over there probably, just drag the tongue in the ground. So we unhooked it, hooked it to five and a quarter. We're gonna move that other air drill over there and park it. Yeah, slowly. Buds are sitting, air drills are unplugged, uh, cleaned up, and uh, not unplugged, but unhooked, I should say. Nick's out spraying the chickpeas right now, and uh, I guess I'm gonna have a little friend join him, but I'm not doing chickpeas, I'm doing chem fallow. Because we still have about 1,100, maybe 1,000 acres of chem fallow dew, and uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful moment to spray, and I should just go do it. As much as I wanna just go home, take a shower, and veg, there's still work to be done. This is the first time this uh, patch is being used. Hopefully I remember how to run it. Okay, parking brake's good. It's in gear, that's good. I'm turning the steering wheel, that's even better. Let's go. Man, I wish I could go 50 like Nick does, but I'm going 36. It's still pretty fast. And I'm only got a thousand gallons and he's got like 1600. Show off, it's okay. We'll get there. Feels good to be back in this thing. Uh, it's been in hibernation a little too long. It's always kind of fun to run this one. This actually used to be Nick's sprayer, and then we built the brute, and that became Nick's sprayer. Funny story, the boom sprayer that we used to have, the wheel boom sprayer that's over by our Quonset, that used to be my sprayer, and it was hooked up to an 8430 John Deere tractor that we used to have. And Nick had the 8940 case tractor that you probably saw in one of the videos that we went through and repainted and so forth. That was hooked up to the new Holland sprayer that's on the brute. Well, in 2013, when I was getting married, Nick was trying to spray and then a few other things happened. He couldn't spray, so my dad jumped on the 8940 and tried to spray. The turbo went out. Okay, so then he jumped on my sprayer 
and uh, took the 8430 with a boom sprayer, went out to the field and it would pulls behind while it came unpinned and as he was turning the corner, swung around, smacked a power pole and almost took the power pole out, but it took out my wheel boom sprayer. Completely totaled the wing. So my dad took the 8430 to try to hook up to the New Holland sprayer and it didn't have the hydraulics we gave up. That being said, in 2013 to 2014 is when we picked up this uh, Apache, it's a 1010 model, and I think it's a 2010 year. So then it became Nix, and then I got the 8940 and uh, the New Holland Spare, and that was mine. So now this is mine, technically, or my dad's, one of the two, and Nick gets the brute. And I have yet to spray in the brute. Put all that time and effort to build it, and uh, still haven't sprayed in it. I actually take pride in that, it's kind of nice. Because that means I don't know how to run it, Nick. You're just gonna have to do it yourself. Ugh. On a side note, there's no AC in here because it leaked on all the 134A coolant and uh, it's starting to get humid in here. Yeah. I'm currently going about 12 miles an hour, about 42 PSI, give or take. We got 100 foot booms on this, covering some ground. It's a little slower. I could change the nozzles out, but Nick took them. Don't worry about it, it's all good. Going slower is actually a little bit better just because it's softer, easier on. Well, the sprayer and uh, me, yeah, I don't mind it so bumpy, so this is kind of nice. This thing rides pretty good, it really does. So this actually has a Cummins motor in it, I think it's a 6.7 Cummins. Not sure on the transmission, but it actually has a drive line to the rear axle, and then two axle shafts going down the wheels. There's no hydrostatic, it's kind of nice to have direct drive. Uh, you don't have to worry about oils getting hot or those things, but at the same time too, keeping it consistent, I think hydrostatic would be a lot more consistent going down the fields for the speed. This one here, I'm always like changing the speeds up and down to try to just, I mean, hills, it kind of slows down, so you gotta speed it up. And the cruise control on this doesn't really work that great. The newer models, I'm sure they've improved that. The best part about when you're spraying with bigger booms, you don't have to worry about hitting a tree because there's no trees around here. 